Welcome back, Focus Auto Family. My name is Michael Yendo, and today we're going to be talking about building out a modern chat app application. Try and say that a bunch of times. In doing so, we're going to be checking out a bunch of the new UI primitives. Now, I've done a previous video on Amplify's UI primitives back when they were almost GA, but now they've officially launched in GA, aka General Availability. So now we can check those out and see what we have to do to build out this fully fledged application. Uh, I'm going to share my screen real quick. Here we go. And this is pretty much what we have going on in store for us today. Now, showing you the application as a whole, uh, a lot of the features that you would expect, right? You have channel support. Uh, you have different colored messages so that everybody can be differentiated, except for yourself. You're colored in blue. Uh, we have dates. We have, you know, is the message edited? Uh, we have the ability to, of course, type in this input box, upload files, uh, pick to different channels. And in doing so, uh, we have scrolling, of course, you probably want that in a chat application. And then as every app should be uh, mobile first design. So we're going to start from a mobile design. We're going to move up You can see some of the sample data that we're going to be working with today. And then through here, uh, we're going to have this nice toolbar. We can select different channels. So this is going to be not so much bare bones, not so much fully fledged. Let's go ahead and just ship it. But this is going to be an excellent starting point for your next application where you can design it, tweak it to your liking. And again, using Amplify's UI primitives, we can showcase how one could take this application, fork it, design it, make it their own, and then ship this off as their own next project idea for their event or uh, whatever project they may have. Now, we're going to be expanding upon this project in upcoming uh, video series, as well as blog posts. We're going to be using CDK, AppSync, Amplify, all that good stuff. And stick around as we are going to code this out from scratch, starting right now. All right, so if you haven't already, go ahead and check out the site uh, for all of the documentation for today's components over in ui.docs.amplify.apus. This is going to showcase all the various components that we're going to be using throughout today's episode, um, such as dividers, headings, etc. It's a really beautiful and well done documentation site that I encourage you to take advantage of. So we're going to be doing this with Next.js using a lot of Next.js features. So let me say npx create next app and then create our chat app. Once I go to change that directory, then I can go ahead and install uh, the one dependency that we're going to be using here. Uh, npmi at aws amplify, and I believe it is ui hyphen react. Perfect. Once this gets done, then we can go ahead and open up our project and start coding things out. Now, a typical Next.js project is what we're working with here. So you can see our package.json in case you want to go ahead and cross reference some of the versions that you're working with. Uh, but we have this styles directory. I am going to leave that alone for the time being. We're not really going to mess around with it too much. What I am going to start tweaking is this um, underscore app.js. Let's go ahead and just configure this so that it supports our current project. I'm going to paste that in just like so. Uh, and again, if I'm moving too fast, feel free to either pause the video or check out the repo link in the description. So we have here our styles.css. This is coming from the Amplify package. We have our Amplify provider, and we're pretty much just going to go ahead and wrap our application inside of that provider. That's all we really have to do inside of this file. The next thing that I'm going to go ahead and check out is this index.js. It has a bunch of that boilerplate code. And if I'm thinking about a chat application where I want users to sign up and have the ability to do um, all this real world stuff, right? You don't want anybody coming to your, uh, to your site and start chatting away. Then this is really going to be blank. It's not going to be the focus of today's episode. So I'm just going to say like, hey, welcome to the homepage. You can probably sign up here and we can revisit that at a later time. And that way you can supply any kind of authentication piece you would like. Of course, down the road, we're going to be using Amplify to do so. The focus of today is actually going to be this channels directory that I'm going to make instead of our pages folder. So selecting this, I can go ahead and create a channels folder just like that. And then uh, if we're working with Next.js, because they do all of the routing with a file-based approach, uh, let's go ahead and say that this channel ID uh, is going to be sort of this, this catch-all route. So we can say something just like that. And then this is really where our, our focus is going to be today. So starting from here, let's start importing some of these uh, components. Now, if I'm going to have a file here, 
all we want to do is have this be the container for our chat application. So I'm going to say something like export uh, const, and then we'll say chat app. And then we're going to let that equal this function uh, right here. So we have that. I think it has to be export default, right? And then inside of here, we're going to have just an empty JS fragment. And then we can start stubbing out some of the modules that we're going to need. Now, again, we're going to be doing this with a mobile first design. So I'm going to say flex, knowing that uh, we're going to want to tweak this on mobile and desktop. So this flex item right here is going to have a direction. And the direction on, and this is just how you do responsive design inside of the new UI components, is that we can say it's going to be a column on mobile. And anytime we get to anything higher than that, let's just say like a medium screen then uh, we're going to switch this to row. And if you think back to the beginning of the video, uh, you saw how it was shifting between column designs and then row, depending on which layout we were in, desktop or mobile. So once we get this flex item inside of here, uh, really we just got to start thinking about our application in the sense that we're going to have a conversation bar with all of our side channels. And then we're also going to have like the message area where uh, folks can type messages and then also view the messages there. So to sort of stub those out for now, I'm just going to have two views. And again, these serve as divs within our UI library. And this first one is going to be something like our conversation bar. And then the second one is going to be the, the message area. And I'm just creating these as sort of placeholders for now. But we'll go ahead and flush these out, starting with this one. Let's go ahead and say that this is our conversation bar. Conversation bar, something like that. And if we're thinking like the sidebar, things like Slack, right? Or something that you saw in the entry part of our application, uh, it's going to take in all the channels that we get inside of our app. So I'm going to set this equal to channels, just like this. And then let's go ahead and stub this out. Now, I don't want to have this whole file be comprised of just a bunch of uh, components. So I'm going to come out here, create a new directory called components just like that. And then this very first one, uh, let's just go ahead and call this our conversation bar. Now, cool little trick is that if I say, hey, I want a new file, it's going to be called conversation bar uh, slash, and then I can say index.js. That'll go ahead and create the folder as well. And that's nice. But the only reason why I'm doing that is because in our directory, we're going to create an actual file called conversation bar. Now, folks have asked me in the past, like, Hey Michael, why are you why are you creating a folder um, with just an index file and then inside of that having the actual file name? Uh, reason being is because preference really. When you are working in your project, you don't want a whole bunch of index.js files flying around. Uh, so you create the one and then you always work from this one. That way, it's a lot easier to uh, to navigate. All right, we're going to stub this out real quick. Perfect. So there's a couple of things that this implies. If you're thinking again in terms of Slack, uh, when you click on that sidebar, you want to go to a different channel in your application, you're really navigating away. So it implies that right off the top, I'm going to need a, a router here to get to uh, various parts of my application. Super cool. Um, now, also, this conversation bar needs to be able to hide itself. So there's a couple of things that that implies as well. One, we're going to have a menu involved. And two, we need to be able to know what breakpoints we're working with. So uh, for that, I'm going to go ahead and bring in these two snippets just right here. So we're going to have some state that says, hey, are we um, keeping track of this menu being open? And then we also have one from uh, this UI library, use breakpoint value. It'll let you know where you're at. So this variation will always be set to, you know, is mobile if you're on a mobile screen or this one is tablet or higher, uh, just something that I'm defining if we're on a tablet or higher screen. And you might be wondering like, Michael, why are we, why are we doing that? Well, it's because at the end of this, I want to go ahead and return sort of a, a smart component, a component that knows uh, what kind of state is currently in. It knows how to display itself. So I'm going to say that it's going to call this a conversation display. Maybe spell that correctly. And it's going to go ahead and know what channels it has to work in. And you'll see what I'm doing here in just a moment here. So we have something like this. And we're going to create this right inside of this component. So we're returning something clean. Um, and then all the, all the messy stuff is really going to be in here. 
So what that looks like is this component here, const conversation display, uh, which is going to return some stuff. Now, I could just return one thing, but really I want to return this component in one of two states. So I'm going to say it is keeping track of those channels. That's perfectly fine. But what it looks like is what's going to change. So I'll say if, you know, this variation uh, equals is mobile, then we'll go ahead and show something. And what I'll do for that something is return a component. Let me pull this up a little bit that has a flex applied to it. And really this is just going to be a, a menu and this menu knows if it's open or not. So I'm going to say is open. Uh, we're going to set that to, you know, is menu open. That's one of the props that's on this component here. And the menu align is going to be set equal to start. And then we have a prop on open change. It's just a change handler that will keep track of whether or not this is open. Since we're controlling this component ourselves, we're going to go ahead and flip this. And you'll see what that looks like right here, where we say is set is menu open. And that'll be the inverse of you know whatever it is. So as of right now, this is just one way for us to display our channels, right? We're not even talking about the messages uh, just right now. This is just a sidebar. We're saying, hey, if we're on a mobile screen, go ahead and show a menu. Now, if we're not, if we're on a tablet or a higher screen, then go ahead and show something else. Now, what I wanna show inside of this menu, we're gonna go ahead and call this our channel list. That'll sort of be the next thing that we define. So a channel list, and this is really gonna take in uh, two items here. It's gonna take in our channels, and then it'll take in a way to toggle once one of those items are clicked. So what that looks like is this right here. Nothing too crazy, just our channel list with a function that knows how to toggle itself. Uh, that's cool. And then afterwards, we wanna go ahead and um, return, you know, what does it look like when we're on desktop? You know, we could say, hey, if the variation that we're on is tablet or higher, and I'm purposely doing this so that way if we need to address other screens later on, it'll be easier. Uh, then go ahead and return just this list of channels, you know, without the context, don't wrap it in a menu, basically, just, you know, display it. Uh, so that's real easy, you know, show hide in terms of responsive display, there's fancier things that you can do. Uh, but that is really all we need. Uh, looks like I have probably an extra curly brace right here, I'm assuming. Yeah. Now we do have to handle this, this on change handler right here, right? This toggle menu. So when somebody clicks on one of the channels, we need to close the menu. Again, we're controlling that behavior ourselves. Now, what we want to do is close the menu and then navigate them to where they're, wherever they want to go. So we'll go ahead and just have something simple like this, where we have a toggle menu. It's going to take in a channel ID. We'll see what that looks like when we get to our mock data. And we're going to do just that, right? Let's go ahead and close the menu and then we'll navigate them. Navigate. Uh, to the new channel. So slash channels slash and then that channel ID. Noting that we're going to slash channels because well, that's the name of the directory that we have right here. Cool. That's fine. I think what we're missing before we can actually display this in action is what does this channel uh, list component look like? So let's go ahead and uh, create just that. All right, so I got my folder structure here again, following that same schema as before, where we have our channel list, uh, and then we have our index file, which is just exporting our main component that we're going to be working in. This channel list is completely blank, but let's go ahead and fix that. What I'm thinking and what you saw in that beginning uh, demo of the application is that it's just a table. There's really nothing fancy going on with this component. So what I'm thinking is we can go ahead and return, and then we'll have a container div, which is a view and amplify. And this is essentially a table. Now, a couple of cool things that we can have right out of the gate are some of the props that Amplify provides. So we can make this striped and then we can make it automatically um, highlight on hover just by adding those two props right there. And then when it comes to the actual uh, fields themselves, table head, table row, table cell, they all apply here. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring those in. If you're following along, make sure that you have those imports. And again, it's pretty straightforward. We're gonna have a header that says channels. Uh, that's gonna be one row. And then we're gonna have our table body that we're gonna define out right here. And in terms of what this component is going to expect, 
uh, it needs to know how to handle uh, the menu being toggled. So we're going to pass in that prop that we had in the parent component, uh, handle menu toggle. And then it also needs to know what kind of channels are being brought in here. So we're going to set channels to be an empty array, uh, just a signal that, hey, we're going to be iterating over some stuff. So pasting this in, what that looks like, let's iterate over the channels. And for each channel, let's just go ahead and display it as another row inside of this table. You see how we're passing in the channel ID here. Again, just a heads up from our last component. When we had this conversation bar, we were in fact making sure that uh, we pass in the channel ID so that we could route to the appropriate, uh, appropriate part of our application. Now I provided all of the mock data in the uh, GitHub repo. So feel free to go ahead and copy and paste that. That's really what we're gonna be working with today. Uh, once you have that file, it's gonna look just like this right here. If I paste this file in. There's our mock data, and we're dealing with you know, mock channels right here. So we have these mock channels, we have our unique channel ID, each channel has a name, and then we're just gonna have in some dummy users here. But the key part is that these channels are nothing but an object that we're gonna go ahead and map over. Now, if you've been paying attention to React land, you know that loading things in a use effect on page load isn't the best way to do it. So what we're gonna be doing is heading over to our underscore channel ID. There we go. And then in typical Next.js faction, we'll be using the get static props uh, parameter here. Let's say that this component is going to accept these two props right from the get-go. And we're gonna call them, you know, what current channel are you on? But then also give me all of the channels that you have. Because we're loading data and also populating all of the channels at build time, we're going to make use of both get static paths and get static props. So in case you want to go ahead and debug, here's a nice little console.log statement, but it's pretty straightforward, right? We're saying, Hey, when we build out this application, go ahead and fetch those channels from that mock data map over them. And for each one, create a path. And that's pretty much what we're going to return. Those are the paths for our application. Now, if somebody heads to a channel that isn't there, uh, then we want to go ahead and sort of fetch that and see if it does exist. And that's what this fallback true is for. Whatever path we are currently on, that's gonna be loaded in as a parameter. So if someone is on our ASDF channel, then what we can do is say something like this. Hey, get static props, we have our params. Now this parameter is gonna be nothing more than the current page that we're on, okay? So what we wanna do is say, uh, hey, mock channels, so database, uh, go ahead and see if the um, within, you know, iterate over yourself and check to see if the current channel ID is within you. Like, you know, were you able to find it? And if so, then that's going to be our selected channel. So using that, I can go ahead and return as props to our component, both the current channel, which is the one that was found, and then all of the channels. So we have all of this at build time. And we don't have to worry about fetching it on the client, which is really, really great. Now, in case someone does go ahead and create a new channel, then I want to go ahead and just, you know, check every 10 seconds and uh, see if that's available. And that's what this re revalidate is going to do. It's going to reset those cache headers to automatically invalidate themselves and re-trigger this every 10 seconds. So loading this up on localhost 3000 with npm run dev, let's see what we can get here. Okay, we got the application loaded. We have our basic home screen uh, that you can flesh out and make you know whatever you want. But really what we're interested in is going to channel slash and then one of the channel IDs from our mock data. What do we got here? Uh, chat app is not defined. What's looking off here? Oh yeah, that makes sense. We have this anonymous function as a default export. We can't have a name there, silly, silly. Let's fix this real quick by saying export default. Uh, we could probably just make this a function, right? Uh, function, which means we got to remove the arrow at the end. 
All right, I got that taken care of. I actually had a couple other imports that didn't automatically get there. So if you're getting that defined, maybe your VS Code just isn't um, pulling in those imports. But in any case, let's go ahead and see that we have our highlight on hover. Uh, we have our tables. This is looking great. It has our mock data applied. Uh, the key thing is that when we click on this, it just switches over to the next part. And uh, there we go. You can see that the ID, super, super small. Can I zoom in on this, maybe? I can't. But, um, you know, EFGT is one of them. And then when I click on general, uh, it switches over to ASDF. All right, back over in this channel ID file. Uh, let's take actually a quick peek at our mock data just to get an idea of what we're working with. So we have these mock messages and each message essentially has this kind of format. Uh, we have an ID, you know, saying created at, updated at, uh, a message, just, you know, quick little relational thing going on here. A message knows what channel it was sent from. In this case, the ASDF, sort of that uh, general channel. Uh, a message knows who the user is that sent it. And then each message is also going to have a profile picture and of course the content associated with it. Quick pro tip, uh, github.com slash whatever your username is, dot png will uh, give you the, the username here. Let's load these messages whenever the application first runs. And you might be thinking like, Michael, let's do that in get static props. That way it's you know, readily available. The problem with doing that is let's just say we have you know, 50 messages when the application builds. When the application runs, it's only going to showcase those 50 messages. And then we'll have to listen for any incoming messages where we might miss stuff in between, right? If a user were to refresh the page, it would fall back to those 50 messages and disregard any of the messages that have come in uh, in the meantime. We could have something like this, right? Um, you know, we have our total messages, set total messages. Uh, and as the messages come in, loading our mock messages, this is, you know, an API call that you would do to your database uh, to get your, your messages. We're just going to go ahead and filter them by channel. So we'll say, does this mock message dot channel ID uh, equal, you know, the current channel, that channel ID. And that's the benefit of bringing in this current channel, as we saw earlier, is uh, we can instantly check against that to filter those out. Now, there's smarter ways that we can do this, and we'll refactor this later on. But this is a, a very cheap way of, of doing so. And of course, any time that we switch to a new page, uh, we want to go ahead and refetch this or recall this effect. So uh, we're going to keep track of this channel ID as the parameter here. Awesome. So taking a peek at this view, and again, if you want to check out any of these components, if you hover over them, uh, we have a handy docs link. And if you click on that docs, it'll take you straight to the docs for that component so you can check out any of the props that are being passed in. Uh, in our case, though, I'm going to say that this view is uh, essentially going to contain a couple of things here. The first one is it's going to have a heading. So I'll bring in our heading, and this is essentially like a, an H tag. And then in terms of, you know, styling this thing, one of the cool things about the UI components is that they come with a token that you can automatically use. What I mean is if I were to come in here and paste in some styles, a couple of things, a couple of different options that we can make use of. So we have our typical style tag, right? We're going to put a border around this thing. Uh, but then we also have this whole tokens, tokens that space that small tokens that colors uh, that blue, and then you can sort of pick your your blue variation. Where that's coming from is right up top here. I can import our theme. And this is the base theme from Amplify that you're more than welcome to extend. Uh, I can import that and that'll give us all the tokens inside of our application that we can take advantage of. Uh, but this is also going to take advantage of our current channel name. And this should be all we need to verify, hey, we have you know a, a channel um, displaying in our application. So let's check that out in the UI. And also, yeah, we're on our general channel. And then if I click over on our job opportunities, this should go ahead and update. There we go. I'm going to switch this over to mobile screen because we really should be focusing on this channel right here. Or sorry, this, this layout. So if I click on this, there's our menu. And then uh, there we go. Once I click and it goes to general, it'll update. So we're in pretty good shape. It takes up the entire space. Uh, let's continue along here. Now, the next part is really sort of that, that meaty part of our application here underneath our heading. Uh, we're going to have a message list, an area for our messages to be viewed. And then we're going to have an input area, which is, of course, going to be where we can type out our message 
and uh, have that file import as well. So putting those components in place, we can always stub them out, right? Uh, so let's see what we have here. I'm just gonna paste in a little snippet just like that and hitting save. This of course is gonna break our application, uh, but let's go ahead and define some of these things starting with our message list. All right, and just giving you a quick peek at the folder structure. Again, it's all in the repo, but if you're following along, uh, super handy, I realized that. So what I have is this directory called message right over here. And then inside of this, I have our index file, uh, which is just gonna export these two things. Now I'm choosing to separate the message list from the message item, just for ease of, of testability and just sort of good practice. But uh, feel free to, to do you if you wanna stick it on the same file. Nothing in here just yet, but then over in our input area, uh, I am doing that same thing where we're exporting our import uh, input area. Let's go ahead and close this out. We're really just gonna be focusing on probably our message item first, since we're gonna work you know, inwards and then out. And this is gonna be super cool because it'll define you know, what a message looks like. And uh, hopefully it's not too many lines of code. So to kick things off, let's just do a quick little export const on our message item here. And we know that it's a message item, right? So it's gonna take in a message, uh, we'll say just like that. And it's an object. And what this looks like is essentially Nothing more than probably just a card that we can have inside of our application, just like that. So we'll keep that there for the time being. But as we saw from our fully fledged application, there are some defaults that we're going to be taking uh, advantage of. So a message knows who sent it, but it also knows like who the currently logged in user is. Now we're not doing authentication in this application. So I'm going to go ahead and just stub that out with, you know, my username being MT Leando. Uh, and then we'll just set some reasonable defaults here. We can check to see if it's edited, meaning, you know, is the message created at not equal to the updated at time. All right, now, nothing too fancy going on with this card in terms of styling. I am gonna tweak, you know, some of the, the look and some of the appeal. So give it a border radius, elevate it, uh, and then it knows how to align itself because this is gonna be in the context of a flex component. So in that sense, you know, is it, ending is it starting uh whether or not it's my message it'll have that iphone effect where it's uh it's pushed to the left or right depending on who sent the message and then of course a little bit of background coloring just to make it look nice so we're making great use of the tokens once again given this image a border radius uh, making sure that it's small and it sort of looks like a a profile picture and of course that almighty alt text as well now, the other stuff is actually more interesting, right? So we're going to have our heading in terms of who the user is, uh, but then we also want alongside that sort of a span showing the created at time. So what that looks like is something like this. Make some room here. Where we have our view. Uh, inside of this, we're going to display flex. So we'll put these right next to each other in terms of having the username. And then we'll also have that created at time. Nothing too crazy going on. Uh, really, we're just having a nice little H5 inside of here. And then whether or not it's my message or not, uh, which dictates that, that background color, then we're gonna set the text of this message to be either, either white or black to match that. Good stuff. Let's move along here to the, the main star of the show. Right? We're gonna have the actual content of this message and see what that looks like. So underneath this heading, we could pretty much just sort of inject this right here. And that's just a quick little text element. Uh, this is going to display inline. I think by default, it's a, it's a block item. And then depending on who the owner is, once again, uh, if it's ours, then we'll make it white text because it's gonna be a blue background. And then if it is not, then uh, we'll make it black text because it's gonna be on a different background color. If it's edited, then just have a span. We have this as prop that we could take advantage of. Make it a smaller font size and then just put, you know, edited right next to it. All right, and the good news of setting up our message item separate from our message list is that we get smaller files. So when it comes to not our input area, but the actual message list. Now, this is only 15 lines of code. I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in right here and, sing, um, and let us chat about it. But not a whole lot going on. We're basically bringing in our flex component and that message item component we just created. The one thing that I do want to let you know that was kind of cool to figure out is we're think of like a, a chat app right when i hit enter i don't want it to show up at the top of the page right um, but at the same time i don't want to have my web page be super long if i have 
a hundred chat messages. I want to come find scroll area. Outside of that, uh, we just go ahead and map over our messages and display them accordingly. Here, if we head over to our channel ID and just comment out our input area and make sure that the message list is all in there, uh, once we save, we should be at a pretty good spot to view it. And there you go. We have all the messages for our general chat. And by constraining to something like 30 VH, uh, we can just make it really apparent of what's going on here. So 30 VH, that does give us this scroll behavior. Obviously, we're going to make this a little bit cleaner, uh, but we still have our input area to work on. So we'll start adding stuff as we go along there. But there you can see the scroll behavior in effect. Let's go to continue on to our input area, start fleshing this out. The one thing to note is that this component does take in an on message send, uh, which is really just going to get fired whenever a message gets sent, as the name implies. So fleshing this out, we can say export const input area, and then same song as dance as before, right? We're going to go ahead and return some stuff. The thing that we're going to return in this case is a view. Nothing too crazy, folks. So inside of this, in terms of styling, we can give this something like a uh, just a border top of a, a light gray, just to separate it from the message area, and then we'll offset that by five pixels. Now, because this is going to have a text field, uh, as well as presumably a way to upload those images, let's just knock this out in state real quick by having this use state part added, a way to set the image and then set the text. And that'll just get us in a good position to have this text uh, area field. So inside of this view, in this container, it's essentially going to have our uh, text area field, just like this. Now, in terms of the file upload and then the button to submit, I'm just going to put in some mock data here uh, for the message. But really, it's just going to be a really simple upload in addition to the, uh, the button itself. So what that looks like is underneath our horizontal rule, we can paste in this little snippet here. We have our flex container, and I'm just going to hit enter on this to make sure that all of these are imported. Uh, but we have our flex container. Let's just go ahead and put the file in the input, uh, or I'm sorry, the file and the button right next to each other with the space between prop applied. Uh, and then we'll just center them out on the Y axis uh, by having center here. And then we'll have a, a standard button. So not a whole lot going on just a bunch of lines because we have this mock message that we're sending along. But whatever the user types in gets put in here. And then we're just going to sort of add this to our general channel. Note that this has to be on the general channel. Otherwise, it's not going to be viewed. All right, running the application gave me this handle message send is not defined. That makes absolute sense, right? When we were in our channel ID base page, uh, we are passing that component a handle message send prop, but it is not ever defined. So let's Fix that real quick. All this is going to do is take in the new message from that text input and then add it to the list. Okay, we're looking in pretty good shape, right? We have the ability to switch things up. I need to be on this general channel if we're going to test out our message here. Uh, it looks like we still have that scroll behavior applied. So a bunch of FDFs in here. If I click send, It'd help if I pass in the prop that it needs. So on message send, silly, silly Michael. Am I even using it at the bottom? Yes, I am. And there we go. So we have that. Can I type in another one? Yep. And you can see that it stays at that scroll position if you are at the very bottom. Cool. Uh, but the layout is a little wonky, am I right? So let's fix that real quick. I think the what I had before probably worked. If we switch this back to 85. Uh, this might get us in a good spot. I just know that from honestly just from messing around with it. Uh, that puts us in a pretty good area for iPhone displays. And then if we go you know, smaller than that, uh, we're still in a pretty good spot where you can scroll and see those messages there. So a couple things that are popping out to me, right? This should be going the entire length of the web page, not just this little, you know, as much as the content will allow. So let's tweak that a little bit. I'm going to head over here and we'll just say, we'll give it a flex. Uh, when you're on, you know, little screens, keep the name or keep the behavior the same. When you're on bigger screens, take up as much space as you can. Uh, switching that over. Let's see here. That looks good. And there you have it, folks. There is our chat application. Now, 
I hear you, right? You're probably wondering, hey, Michael, what happens when we have real data flowing in? What happens about you know authentication and showing the current user? How do we upload images and all that good stuff? Definitely, definitely, definitely hear all of your thoughts. In the next couple of episodes, we are going to be fleshing this thing out with AppSync, AWS, getting a real scalable solution. Uh, so that way you can deploy it for your next project and just build it that much further. This whole thing is part of a larger blog post series in conjunction with this video series that you're watching right here. So follow me on my blog, blog.focusauto.com. Um, also check out the official AWS blog. I'll be posting there as well. And if video is your thing, which I'm very grateful that it is, go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. As you can see, the channel is growing. We just crossed a thousand subscribers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of your support. Let me know in the comments what features you are most excited about seeing. And I will chat with all of you then. Until next time, peace.